so slow. Today I'm with Yeah Trees, folks. We've already cut the limb down that had the bees in it. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But basically, uh, we're getting this. Right around there was where the bees were. So I'm staying on to help them out. And then I'll run off and get my chainsaw, and then I'll cut the limb that's on the ground open and do my thing. Yeah, trees. <laughs> How's the bees treating you up there, Owen? Absolutely fine, sir. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. I feel a lot better, like, clouded in this. Like Just a little bit, it'll keep them off of you. Man, I'm I'm in it. That was cool. Up here, I got stung somewhere in my arm. It'll be all right. You gonna live, you think? I think I'll live, yes sir. All right, good. I hope so. You done with the smoker? I don't wanna be. That thing's so cool. It keeps, I mean, it burns my knuckles, but other than that, Hey folks, JP here. We are in late May. It's a Saturday morning and I'm back on this job. Yeah Trees. I worked with the uh, Yeah Trees yesterday to just to kind of keep them out of trouble while they were cutting down limbs and stuff and getting this tree down as far as it could go, which they did a pretty good job. There's not much left of it, but it had bees in it and uh, we lowered the limb to the ground. You can see it behind me. So today I'm here with my chainsaw it's a nice peaceful day, but it's about to get a little noisy with that chainsaw, but we're gonna get these bees out of this tree today, folks. Follow uh, Yeah Trees if you're uh, interested in checking out them out on Instagram and uh, YouTube. Uh, they got some kind of wacky videos, a little bit different style than mine, but uh, catchy, a lot a lot of stuff moving, and uh, but kind of pretty neat, and lots of graphics. So uh, check out their YouTube channel, uh, Yeah Trees. All right, let's get on with this.
chain to the cut through. I mean, I just chopped in my chain, but man, it went through it like butter. The other part of the tree is going to be anything like this. That should be pretty cool, I think. Okay, this tree is in bad shape, folks. Really bad shape. All right, there's our cavity. Okay. Some pretty white comb in here. If, we, if I can lift this whole thing out, maybe I can shake them. Oh. They did get a little riled up yesterday. Not too bad, but the tree, tree people were a little more concerned than I was. Uh, and I told them, this is not upset, trust me. <laughs> you ain't seen upset yet. All right, boy. It'd be nice if I had another little piece of plywood. I'm just gonna go ahead and shake them in on top. Hopefully there's not too much debris that drops down, but there it is. I know they can clean it up. See, we just, we wanna get this out of the way so we can move on to the next section. All right, so see that pretty white comb? Hard to use that white comb because it's so soft. It falls apart on you a lot of times. And it's torn sometimes, you know, like in the tree too, your combs will be like a wacky kind of shape. You don't want to put just anything in your frames. Ideally, you want comb that fills the frame, you know, nicely. You know, stuff like this, it's so soft. I'm hoping that we'll have some stuff to frame up. It's not always the case with these in a tree. Anyway, you see what I did here, though? I looked at the cavity, you know, I could see because we have a cross section. The tree guys cut this yesterday. We're trying to figure out where this thing ended. I don't think they went this far. But anyway, I don't think we really killed anybody. I mean, it was a cut right there, but you know, just a little little bit uh, further they went. But so I looked at this cavity and I, I went in from the side and the top. That way I was able to just lift it right out. I'll, I'll usually will take a look at the cavity and uh, that helps me determine where I'm gonna make my cut. So you can see right here, the cavity, and you, but also and more importantly, where the hive is attached. So it's attached right here. I probably could just cut sections and lift out like I did with this. And that actually would probably make things a lot easier. Normally I think I'd go in from the side and try to detach it, but these uh, 
I think I'll do it that way. I think I'll just cut sections and work my way towards the front of the thing. All right, so yeah, nice, beautiful cockroach. What people in Florida call palmetto bugs. Look at that big, nasty thing. Little bees, when you got bees, you got roaches. They just, these things, you know, I guess they could smell the beehives and they show up and they get in there. And I've even seen roaches eating bees uh, more than on more than two occasions, I think three now. They'll catch a bee, literally catch it and kill it, and they use them animals and they'll eat the dang bee. I would have thought a parasite like a roach could do that, but I guess uh, they got a little bit of predator in them. Wow. There's a lot more like this. This big old piece should weigh. A piece like that could weigh easily, easily 7,500 pounds. Look at this. Ah. You know, termites and water did a number on it. All right, so let me just kind of move this over here a little bit. All right. Not worried about them too much. Whew. I dizzy there for a second. All right. I might just grab the tree and move it a little bit so I'll make my cuts I don't have sawdust flying back over there too much. Just move it. Ow. <laughs> All right, sting number one. Accidental sting though, okay? That don't count. Well, it does, but you know, it's not a purposeful sting on their part. I went to grab the tree and then didn't see the bee on there, so my bad on that. All right, let's uh. Yeah. Alright. Hopefully we can do this without getting too much sawdust, you know, in our setup. Alright, so alright, that part's done. See the progress we made so far? Alright. We've just begun. Like that song. We've just begun. Am I gonna start singing? Alright. I think I'll just kinda try to go in here. Mid on take sections out like that. We gotta smoke them, run them in. So we don't want to. We don't want to bother the bees out here when we're making our cuts. So let's try to run them in. I'm gonna make a big long cut right now, though. So we get that big long one out out of the way. You know. Let's do that. Keep them calm now. Keep them calm. Keep them calm. Not confused and collected. All right. Did this one go through? Yeah. Pretty much. All right, folks. So far, I'm digging this tree. I am digging this tree so far. Definitely digging. I got to make a... There's another little cut on this thing. I didn't go quite all the way through. Uh, yeah, I'm just about through.
All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can get this big chunk out. Might be able to. Might be a bigger piece than I originally wanted to take out, but uh, let's see. Let's see what we got. Looks like it wants to come. Yeah, the tree is just bad shape. I think I got another a few more cuts to make. Got on a little bit riled. Not bad, not bad. Seems to be in a better mood today than uh, yesterday. Uh, I don't, I don't think you got trees. They did get stung yesterday. Not many, not many. All right, that's going to come out. I think. Let's see. Yeah, and that next one's ready too. Let's concentrate on this one first. I think. All right. Let's see what we got, folks. That's some pretty brood. Wish I had a shallow with me, but I don't even use shallows. So um, let's just put this here for now. Yeah, these bees I don't believe have been here very long, folks. White comb, you know, pretty white comb. That one coming, I think. Yeah. Something about comb is breaking apart, but oh well, it is what it is. Now, normally, I don't frame up skinny comb sections like this vertically, but uh, I might stack them on top, is what I might do. So, I always try to orient the comb sections in the frames like they came out of the hive, you know what I mean? So this is the bottom top would be here all right so my goal right now is just to frame up some comb get them interested in going in the box let's just start right here with this trim this trim it over here as well Yeah, real funky. Hmm, I don't know. I don't know about this. Well, if I'm gonna stack it, I might as well trim this. I guess. Let me just go ahead and trim it. So we'll put this on the bottom, and then just I guess stack them. Not thrilled with this, but at least it should get them oriented to our box. That's what we want. You know, some of this stuff can be changed out later if need be. Who knows? They might connect it and draw it out, you know, nice and pretty. All right. This one's got honey and brood. Really like that neck section better and this tour, but it's wide. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna frame this up. Let me grab this. I like I like this over here. Okay, this off of here. This one really shouldn't take all that long, folks. Uh, okay, so I've been here. Uh, how long have I been here? I don't know. Maybe a total of 40 minutes, maybe. I guess. Okay. So, and this is, you know, progress we made so far. So, moving along pretty quickly with this one. 
because this tree is like a literally like a sponge and you cut into it you know this it boy i mean when they were working on that tree this the whole tree was moving quite a bit i thought i was surprised at that you know when he was up in the bucket and he'd push against the tree and there was still a good bit of it left the thing would move i, I just couldn't believe what i was seeing but now i can appreciate it having uh you know cut through part of this tree and i mean this thing needed to come down it was, it was a hazard it was right for sure folks for sure all right so we're just going to go ahead and try to fit this one in here see it's not the prettiest setup but it's better than that. i'm going to try it this way let's just see I'm gonna grab this one. I might just have to reinforce it with more rubber bands. Like I said, that the idea here really is just to get them you know, going into the the hive box. You know, that's that's the main goal here. Yeah, I'm just gonna put this in here like this. And then when I drive home, I'm gonna be careful. And then you know when you get the bees to the new destination, you definitely need to check something like this immediately. Because you know these comb sections could come apart. Uh, and fall on the bottom board but like I said right now the main goal is really just uh, to get something in there to get them interested in, in going in to our setup okay and trust me that will that's babies right there they want to incubate the babies they want to cover brood you know this is their home this stuff here is their home so let's put this one in okay all right Slowly but surely, we're going to get them going into this setup, folks. Slowly but surely, okay? A little more you put in there, the little more they want to go in there. That's how it works. That's how it works. All right. This is going to be a honey frame. This one will go, like, on the outside. But I'm going to give it to them. What the heck? Now, I can't. I'm gonna open feed this. It's falling apart on me. So we'll just we'll wind up open feeding them. And we can't use that. It fell apart on me. A little too new, a little too heavy. Okay? Let me see if I can. They're trying to run off. Huh? Maybe I can bump this. Let's see if I can bump this. Real quick. Maybe. See, I'll do it like this. Alright. Bump it real quick. Get most of the bees off. All right. See, and now we're left. Okay. With this minus a bunch of bees. See if I can frame this up. We want this brood in there. You know. Let's see here. All right. See if we can do that. It's not pretty, folks. Not not pr not even a little bit pretty. Get this out. But we're gonna make it work. Some kind of way we're gonna make this work for us. All right. Oh, let's see. Kind of twist it up on me. Might be able to straighten that. So the weight of that honey. Just it's so much heavier. You know, honey is a good bit heavier than water. You know, water is uh, eight pounds to a gallon. The honey is 12 pounds to a gallon. Did you know that? It's a true story. Yep. Alright. See, it's not beautiful, but I think it'll work. Move this down a little bit. Alright, that'll, that'll work. Let's see if we can get another one on there. Alright. So we'll have to open up more tree to get another piece in there. Let's get this out of the way. Alright, at some point, you know, we're going to move that box like over here. You should see there's a big clump of bees. Let's see if I can show you that. There is a huge clump. Let's see if I can pick that up. Are we getting at it? Not. Can you see all that? Alright, so.
see if this thing will move, folks. Come on. All right, it's coming. That's good. That's good. All right. All right let's see what we can do. Apart on me. Oh, really falling apart over here. The termites got to that a little bit too. Alright. So now, let's just uh, put this over here. There's some ants in here too now. Some little black ant. Let's see if you're catching any of them doing it. They'll raise up their back ends. I think these are acrobat ants. They're a little small though. But uh, anyway, some little black ant. They're not, actually not biting me right now, but I think these are acrobat ants. The you know, alate's getting bigger, of course, but see how they're kind of raising up. Any entomologists out there, you feel free to correct me. I think these are, I think these are uh, acrobat ants. And, um, I have seen ants run, run bees out of hives before. It's rare, but I have seen it. And believe it or not, it won fire ants. I've seen fire ants and bees coexist fine with each other. You wouldn't think so, but it's ants like this that they get up in the thousands that might run the bees out because they just, you know, had enough with them. Because uh, they'll, you know, some of these ants are nervous, you know, they'll eat honey, they'll eat protein, you know, so they really can mess with the colony. But it's rare it happens. I've seen it in my apiaries like maybe three times over the years. So it's not real common, but it can happen. Let's see if I can pop this up. Yeah, it'll come. Ah. One little spot here. Hanging on. Oh, there it is. Okay. This piece will come out. This one wants to drop down. Let's get it up. All right, I see a good looking piece down there. So we could frame, we could add this and maybe another piece to this frame. And then uh, I see a good piece we can add. I'm just gonna fit it in here. This leaf out. Let's just put this in here, folks. Like so. All right, this should be a good one, folks. Might even have to trim it, I don't know. Let's pull this out and see. Let's see what we got. All right. Yeah, that's a, no, yeah. It's a better piece. I don't think we'll have to trim it, but definitely a better piece. Ooh, look, it's wanting to bend on me because it is new. Ooh, it's a funny shape, though. Let's, let's see if I can just, Ah, uh, not liking this. You might have to trim it a little bit here, there, but let's just frame it up. And then we could tweak it after we get it in there, right? Okay. Let's just get the comb section secure. Actually, it's not sitting too bad. Good flow, you did surprise you. They might just fill all this in and make it look pretty again. Okay. One more rubber band on the side. Pieces want to push out. All right, let's put this in. So that's two frames now. Okay. We got two frames.
The reason why I put the cover on kind of like that is to create a dark environment. You know, they like a, a dark environment. I want to keep it open too though so we can shake bees on top of the frames. I see bees going to the box now. And uh, yeah, we got a different story all of a sudden. Let me show you what that looks like. Bees over here definitely. Going in and out. Thought I saw some oriented. I put an orientating pheromone. Maybe not quite yet, but look, they're definitely going in. See? Brood's in there. Just didn't want to go in there. And familiar scent and all that good stuff, but all right. Let's get back to this. I bet you did, huh? Hmm. Wow. Good bit of bees on that. Let me just shake these. Some brooding stuff on here. Maybe I can use this. Alright. See that? I think I'll yeah, I think I'll trim this piece. So that was the bottom, this is the top. Let me just trim this. We'll fill in that other frame now. I'll show you. Oh yeah. Okay. So put this in here. And again, this is just to get them to, uh, you know, accept the, the hive setup. And as far as like the positioning of the cells and all that, uh, if you want an interesting read, look up Housel positioning beehives okay housel h-o-u-s-e-l i believe it is positioning yeah there's a there's a rhyme and a reason why they build these cells the, the way they do folks but uh for a better explanation than i can give you check out like i said housel positioning all right it looks a little funny but look it's a full frame just about let's put this in the setup okay I think we'll wind up framing at least another one up. Let's put that in there. All right, so we have three frames going right now. Wow, this is just going to so work out. You watch. You watch. And I came relatively early today. We ran out of time yesterday, actually. And the heat was kind of getting to me. I got this weird thing that happens with my ears. They get like closed off or something and then uh, I got to get in the air and take a break only happens when I'm in the heat and I've been googling it I have no idea what it is so if y'all have a clue out there throw it at me but uh yeah I get like I don't know if it's like the beginning of the heat stroke but only happens and I had plenty of fluids and stuff and I really wasn't doing a whole lot but you know I'm on standby to help the tree guys but it's just it's kind of a weird thing that I get all right Let's see how we're going to do this. Uh, we need to get this piece out of here. I think once we get this piece out, you're really going to see these bees going in it. I'm seeing a lot of activity over here. They're moving all around like they're about to make a decision. That's the way I would describe it. I should be able to just back this right out. Let's see if I can do that. I think that'll work. There we go. Now look at that. That's pretty nice, huh? Boy, boy, wants to fall apart though. I could feel it. It's so new. All right, I gotta figure out how, what I'm gonna do with this. Let me, let me try to shake some beads off first. Yeah, I'll just cut right in here. Wow, we're going to wind up using probably most of this. Cool. I knew there was a good frameable comb section in there. I knew it. All right. Might have to trim this just a hair right here. 
Ow. Somebody's either stinging me or biting me. All right, that's good. Let's see if I can grab this and kind of rotate it. Might be able to. Ooh. Come on. Whoa! The jets decided to fly over to salute me for this one, huh? Alright, let's get this in here. Looks like a good one. Alright, one more. And then, uh, I'll give you a close-up. Well, I wish they were all like this, you know? All the comb sections framed up nicely like this. Oh, smooch it and be there. Oh, there you go, girl. I think an ant is biting me. That's an ant. All right, look at that. Okay, so they should be able to, you know, fill all these empty spaces in for the good nectar flow. Heck, in a week, this will look like, you know, they drew it out themselves. All right, let's put this down in there. That's a good one, folks. Put this in. That's a good one there. Actually, it's so nice. I don't want it. I want it to be the middle frame. Probably the next one should be a middle frame too. All right. All right. Look at that, huh? All right. Wow. I don't know. That might even be a better frame. I mean, better comb section to frame up than even this one. But then we're going to frame this up. Heck, I might might frame that other one up too. Now let's shake these off. All right. These are really clustering and orient over here on the underside of this stump. We definitely want to investigate that. Let's get this off of here. Should be able to frame up this whole thing. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. All right. So much nicer than those earlier comb sections. All right. Yeah, we're gonna frame up one more. Let's put this here. No, we'll try. We want this in the middle. There's that good one. Right. See them how they starting to congregate and hide? Huh? All right, we'll frame up one more. One more, and then it's uh gonna be rock and roll time. Yeah, yeah rock and roll. Cause that means it's all downhill, and we just yeah, maybe you know, hopefully uh, nothing happens to the queen. They're acting like they do have a queen and she's obviously on this end because they're all bunched up and happy down here. Happy as flies on you know what. So uh we're gonna see if we can't you know find her. Just for a minute, and we gotta investigate this. The queen, believe it or not, she might she could be over here, folks. Now, yeah, we need to investigate this over here. There's just too many bees. This is what we got going on over here. It's, you know, good little mess of bees. I cannot not look at this. So we have to investigate this, okay? Because that queen could be over here. It'd be nice to find the queen before she moves in. That way I don't have to pick through all the frames and stuff. Oh, we still got that over there. And I got sidetracked. 
Well, let's get this comb out and then we'll go look at that. Man, look. Seems like the bees are just steadily piling up over there, folks. Queen might be over there. Look at that, folks. You getting this? Hope so. She could be on here. We need to go through this. All right? We need to go through this. I might just put this on. Oh, so oh. oh, shoot. This is too hard. Let's just kind of look through here a minute. Let me see if I can bump this. Uh, Bear with me a minute. We're having some technical difficulties. I'll just do it like that. There she is. And there she is. Yeah. 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 Let me you. Get in there. All right, we got her in there. I'll show you. I'm not gonna lie, folks. This is was a textbook bee tree removal. Uh, basically, you know, the tree was not hard to cut. Bees were nice. Just everything lined up. I've been here maybe an hour and a half. Maybe two hours. I'm not sure. Got the queen. Let's put her in the setup. I'm going to use a little repellent. I mean, I'm probably going to back the, the branch up. I'm, I might cut this, uh, this thing a little more. Just to make it easier for the tree people to pick up what was left. But, uh. Yeah, it's all downhill from here, and we got a nice, good-looking little Italian queen. So let's put her in the setup. Man, I, you know, I saw that ball of beans, and it kept growing. So, it's from experience, you know. From experience, I know to check something like that, you know. All right. So, I see they they starting to cover a little bit. There. All right. so that's how you get bees to go into a setup folks you physically you know have to get them in there I mean what I mean by that is you got to get them to accept the setup so we have you know brood comb and we got the queen in there we've got the comb out of the tree you can't just put a box next to something, expect them to leave and go into your box just because you want them to go in your box. No, you have to physically move them. You have to force them, basically. You know, you have to take the upper hand. You have to show them who's the boss. You have to tell them, look, this is your new home. You know, sometimes they're a little stubborn and they may not want to cooperate as much, but you just have to make it work now we got her in i'll show you what else we're gonna do i'm gonna do some other fun things like maybe get a march going we got them putting their butts up now folks thank you see how we have the entrance right up against the log the queen we found just a few minutes ago on this thing and they still think she's on there why would they think so because she puts out pheromones that they recognize believe it or not i've seen pieces of a queen in the street before that bees were covering pieces tell me that bees don't have a good sense of smell folks look at them fanning now putting our nasal off See them? You can see the gland, it's right before the tip. It's a little tan spot. 
whitish tan spot. That's the Nazanoff lamp. See, they're starting to head that way. Now, do I have to do this? No, but y'all want to see a march, don't you? Let's do it. Start on this end. This is what I do. And I'm going to go on the outside of the mall, too, because I don't want them sometimes to run around the outer edges and they'll go on the knee. So, you know, cover your bases. So you do a little bit so they get the message. You know, you get them running, you use your smoker. And then, uh, as they run and vacate some of these areas, then you can add a little more repellent, you know what I mean? It can be stubborn, folks. It can be stubborn. Just try not to get it on the bees. This stuff could kill them. This is honeybee going. It is a natural bee repellent, according to Scott Derrick with Life Boy Bee Company. He manufactures this stuff, you know? And I've been using it quite a while. Before it even hit the market, in fact, he let me uh, try it out for a couple of years. He had different fragrances. I think this is the only one he carries now. But he had like lemon and he might have had a coffee one one time. I don't know. The problem with that, I kept drinking it. Just kidding. Trees can have cavities and pockets sometimes, folks. If some I'm smoking here, it's coming out over there. So. And there's a little cavity in there. Y'all want to see a march? You're about to see a march, okay? I'll show you. It's about to happen, folks. It's about to be on for corn, as they say. Okay? Watch this. Watch. Watch. Come on, don't make me a liar now. So I'm watching there, girls. Come on. Well, these, are, these are starting to run up. This shit stuff going in. Let's get a march going. Oh, we got a march. Oh, we got a march happening. We got a march. We got a march. We got a march. We got a march. Even these are starting to move. See? Hey, come on, come on, Lord. Hey, ooh, ooh, I love this. This never gets old, here, folks. Look at that. Let's march on in there, girls. Get in my box. Yeah, bees. Yeah, bees. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. Heck, watch this. Watch this. I think we can do this. Um. Wow. A good bit of bees. Yeah, let's do this. We do this. And then we could lower the hive. Watch this. come back the bees will be in the box or on the box if they're on or in the box that's fine if I come back and they're all over the stump like this we don't want that naturally so let's try to remediate that problem now let's do the smoke thing smoke thing and repellent thing yeah, this was the entrance up there folks this was the entrance just crap out of here I'm glad I brought it deep it's a decent bit of bees huh Spray, 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 spray. I don't know if you can tell, they're kind of running up, kind of getting away from where I sprayed. Okay, that's a good march right there, so that's a good march. <laughs> nice march, eh? Yeah, we did a nice march in May. Almost in June, folks. Yeah, almost in June. That's butt. 
in the air. Love to see them be butt. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. See them bee butts? That's what I'm talking about. Give me some bee butts. Give me some bee butts. All right, folks. I sure hope y'all enjoy this video. Another one from JP the Bee Man. I'm having a fantastic day, and I hope you are too. Until the next one. Yeah, bees. <laughs> All right, folks. Let me show you what's going on. So I'm back to pick up the bees. It's 81 degrees. See how they're all over the front of the hive like this? If it was 70 degrees, 75 maybe, 60 degrees, whatever, cooler, they'd all be in the box. Because it's 81 degrees, this is what I'm dealing with. But I'm gonna go ahead and puff them. I'm gonna puff them with the smoker. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and smoke them a little bit, see if we can't run them in the box. But I'm okay with them being on the box and in the box. So I can still load them like this, but let's run some of them in. All right, I got the smoke lit. Go ahead and puff them. Come on, girls. All right, I'm gonna put the phone down because it's putting light on them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna smoke them up, down, and all that, and then I'll show you once they run in what it looks like. Now, let me show you what it's looking like now. See that? Isn't that amazing? That smoke will do, but I'm gonna tell you what, next month, the month after that, when it's like 90 degrees at night, hey, they may not cooperate as much. You know, sometimes you just gotta sit there and just smoke them a good little bit to run them in for your setup. But like I said, as long as they on the box and in the box, I'm okay. When they're like on the ground or something like that, then you gotta, you know, work, you don't wanna leave a bunch of bees behind. So this is uh, fine right now. I can put them in the truck now. You can see I don't close the entrance up at night. You know, I'm not stopping anywhere. Sometimes they'll run out in transit and then you, you smoke them again a little bit and they'll run back in your box and then you can take it out of your truck, okay? Hope y'all enjoyed this. Maybe you learned something or two. All right, folks, I sure hope y'all enjoyed this video. Another one from JP the Bee Man. I'm having a fantastic day and I hope you are too. Until the next one. Yeah, bees. <laughs>